This is BBC Two, and it's grand final time. Six months of intellectual duelling are almost at an end as tonight we play the final match in this university challenge. 200 teams apply to compete, now only two remain. They've literally got the trophy in their sights and in a little under half an hour one of them will take it away. The team from St John's College, Oxford represents a student body of about 400 and they're all aged 20 or 21. They're pretty lucky to be here in fact having lost their first match against Birkbeck College London and living on only as one of the highest scoring losers. They then went on, though, to beat first Edinburgh University, then Queen's College Cambridge, then Bristol University, and finally, in the semi-final, University College Oxford. Let's meet them again. Hi, I'm Aaron Bell from Beckenham in Kent, and I'm reading Politics and Economics. Hi, my name's Rob Linham, I'm from Hove in Sussex, and I'm reading Law. And their captain? Hello, I'm Patrick Finglass, I'm from Shirley and Sully Hull, and I'm reading Classics. Hello, I'm Edward Laird from Ballingham in Herefordshire, and I'm reading Physics. Now, the team from Imperial College London are all scientists and represent a student body of about 9,000. As you can see, they're also slightly longer in the tooth. They arrived here by way of victories over Cranfield, the reigning champions Durham, Manchester University, and in the second semi-final, Hull. Let's meet them again. Hi, I'm Siegfried Hodgson from Penrith in Cumbria, and I study computing. Hello, I'm John Douglas from Borkhurst in Hampshire, and I'm doing a PhD in earthquake engineering. And their captain... Hi, I'm Gavin Escort from Mortlake, and I'm studying computing. Hello, I'm Alexander Campbell from Edinburgh, and I'm studying science communication. The rules are immutable. Ten for starters, fifteen for bonuses, five-point fines for an incorrect interruption. For the title of series champions, fingers on the buzzer, here's your first starter for ten. Which letter of the Greek alphabet has a name which means small o? St. John's, Finglass. Omicron. Omicron is correct. <laughs> First set of bonuses in the final, then go to you. Or they're on the use of Greek theatrical conventions. Shakespeare's Henry V draws on a convention from Greek drama by opening and closing the play with speeches from which figure? Chorus. 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 Correct. Which play by T.S. Eliot is set in a country house in the north of England, uses Ivy, Violet, Gerald and Charles as the chorus and brings the Eumenides or Furies on stage? The Family Reunion. Correct. Which 1995 Woody Allen film includes a chorus commenting on the action and provides a finale by singing and dancing when you're smiling? Mighty Aphrodite. Very good. Yes. Sure? yes. Okay. Mighty Aphrodite. That's right. Another starter question now for a possible ten. A constant source of controversy in theology. Which word means an area between heaven and hell said to hold the... St. John's Laird. Purgatory. No, you lose five points. Said to hold the souls of unbaptized infants ah, whose burden... Imperial of... Hodgson. Limbo. Limbo is right, yes. <laughs> Your bonus is Imperial are on 19th century British scientists. Born in 1823, which British naturalist was staying in Sarawak in Borneo when he wrote his essay on the law which has regulated the introduction of new species based on his research in the Amazon and the Malay Peninsula? Alfred Russell Wallace. Correct. As well as the study of evolution, Charles Darwin explored many other natural phenomena, including the role of which creatures in soil fertility? Earthworms. Correct. Robert Fitzroy, who commanded HMS Beagle with Darwin aboard, was himself highly regarded in which scientific field to which he devoted himself following his retirement? Geology? No, it's meteorology. Another starter question now. Which phrase comes in part from an archaic word meaning a tax and is now used to mean that a person has got away with a crime or misdemeanour with no punishment or penalty? St. John's Bell. Scott Free. Scott Free is right, yes. <laughs> St. John's, you get three bonuses on writers and their memorials. Which writer's memorial in Père Lachaise Cemetery in Paris is inscribed with his own words and alien tears will fill for him pity's long broken urn for his mourners will be outcast men and outcasts always mourn? 
Wild, yes. That sounds good. Wild. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, yeah, it's going to yeah, yeah. be, yeah. Wild. This is Oscar Wilde from the Ballad of Reading Jail. Which poet laureate's grave in St Michael's Churchyard at Stinsford in Dorset contains the lines, Shall I be gone long, forever and a day? To whom there belong? Ask the stone to say, ask my song. Dorset. Grey? Was he poet laureate? I don't know. Grey? No, it was C. Day Lewis. Which American-born poet's grave near Hebden Bridge in Yorkshire bears the inscription, even amidst fierce flames, the golden lotus can be planted? Walt Whitman? T.S. Oh, Eliot, yes. Eliot? Yeah, T.S. Eliot. No, it was Sylvia Plath. Another starter question now. Lead shows two valencies in its compounds. One is plus two. What's the other? Ah, real escort. Plus four. Plus four is right, yes. <laughs> Here are your bonuses then, Imperial. Founded in 1123 by Ray here, a former courtier of Henry I, which London hospital faced closure in 1992 following Sir Bernard Tomlinson's report of the inquiry into the London Health Service? St Bartholomew's. Correct. The company set up in Edinburgh in 1826 by John Bartholomew is particularly associated with the publication of what? Atlas and Maps. Atlas and Maps. Uh, Max is correct, yes. The St. Bartholomew's Day Massacre of the Huguenots in 1572 is traditionally blamed on which queen consort? Um, Margot? No, Margot. Margot? No, it's Catherine de' Medici. Right, we're going to take a picture around now. For your picture starter, you're going to see a work by a French artist. Ten points if you can name him, please. St. John's Bell. Mandelbrot? No, anyone want to buzz from Imperial? No, I'll tell you, it's Eve Klein, his blue sponge. So we'll take the picture bonuses when someone gets a start a question right. Here it is for a possible ten. What word derives from the old English meaning to make raids or plunder and was given to the lawless bands who ah, operate... Imperial Douglas. Reeve. Reavers. Reavers is right, yes. <laughs> So we uh, follow on from the unidentified uh, Eve Klein with three more post-war works by artists who were noted for their colour theory. In each case, you have to name the artist. Here's the first. Mondrian? No, that's Barnett Newman. Let's have a look at the second now. Rothko. Rothko? No, that's Joseph Alvers. Let's have a look at the third. Rothko. That is Rothko, yes. Right, another starter question. Fingers on the buzzers. For which event did Denise Lewis win a gold medal? St. John's Bell. The heptathlon. The heptathlon is right. It's 2000 in the Olympics. St. John's, you get three questions on poetry about England. What is the title of Robert Browning's poem which begins, Oh, to be in England now that April's there? Thoughts from abroad. Home thoughts from abroad. Home thoughts. Home thoughts from abroad. Correct. Which of the romantic poets wrote about his journeying? I travelled among unknown men in lands beyond the sea, nor England did I know till then what love I bore to thee. Romantic poet. Byron. Southey. Byron sounds good. Byron. Byron? No, it's Wordsworth in one of the Lucy poems. And which poet wrote in 1912, God, I will pack and take a train and get me to England once again, for England's the one land I know where men with splendid hearts may go. Who? I don't know. No. Not Kipling? Michael Did he live abroad? Who was living abroad at that time? Yeah, I Kipling. Kipling? No, it's Rupert Brooke in the old vicarage. Right, another starter question. Who or what are being described? An 18th birthday present named Susan was the first, and ten generations, all descended from her, have followed, including current members called Phoenix, Kelpie and Swift, as well as some Dorgies. In other words... St John's Linham. They're the Royal Corgis. They're the Queen's Corgis, yes. piece of stupendously trivial knowledge takes you into the lead and here are your bonuses. Which low temperature phenomenon was discovered in Mercury in 1911 by the Dutch physicist H.K. Onnes and has since been observed in about 25 other elements including lead and tin and in thousands of alloys and chemical compounds? Superconductivity. Yes, it was. Superconductivity. Superconductivity. Correct. The first widely accepted theory of superconductivity is known by the initials of the three physicists who developed it in 1957. What is the name of the theory? Barton Cooper. 
So the initials are? BCS. BCS. It is BCS. Sounds right. Does that sound right? BCS. BCS is right, Bardi and Cooper and Schrieffer. In a revolutionary application of superconductivity, the Yamanashi Maglev test train using superconducting magnets was opened in Japan in April 1997. For what is maglev an abbreviation? Magnetic levitation. Yes. Magnetic levitation. Okay. Magnetic <laughs> levitation. Correct. Another starter question. An absence seizure and a tonic-clonic seizure are mild and more serious forms of which medical condition. Ah. Imperial Campbell. Epilepsy. Epilepsy is right. <laughs> Three questions on temperamental outbursts for your bonuses, Imperial. Which artist who lived from 1571 to 1610 had many encounters with the law? In the early 1600s, he was accused of throwing a plate of artichokes at a waiter and had to leave Rome in 1606 after killing a man in a brawl about a wager after a game of tennis. Cellini? No, it's Caravaggio. Although the founder of a religious movement noted for its pacifism, which 17th century religious, religious leader was imprisoned in Nottingham in 1649 for brawling in church? Bunyan? No, it was George Fox, founder of the Society of Friends, and born in 1923 for five points, which American writer achieved early fame with a war novel, embarked on a public life of bar brawling, drinking and arm wrestling, being cited in 1970 by the feminist writer Kate Millett as the perfect chauvinist pig. Mailer? It is Norman Mailer, yes. Another starter question. Originating about 1939, which German term is generally used to describe a fast-moving military manoeuvre combining... St. John's Linham. Blitzkrieg. Blitzkrieg is correct. <laughs> Here are your bonuses, St. John's. What is induced by a diaphoretic drug? Dia... Uh, dia... No, that's, that's... Could, could you spell that, please? D-I-A... P-H-O-R-E-T-I-C. D-H-O-R. It's not diuretic, it's diuretic. Come on. Sickness. Sickness? No, it's sweating or perspiration. In his speech to Parliament in May 1940 on becoming Prime Minister, what three things, in addition to sweat, did Churchill say were the only things he had to offer? Blood, toil, tears. Nothing to offer. Blood, toil, tears. Blood, toil, tears. Correct. Born in 1510, which English physician and scholar published an account of the 16th century epidemic sweating sickness, attributing the outbreak to dirt and filth? Position of that. Harvey? 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 No, it was John Keyes, as in Goldville, Donville and Keyes College. Another starter question now, fingers on the buzzers. E to the 2 pi i over 3 and e to the 4 pi i over 3 are two of the three cube roots of unity. What's the third? St. John's Laird. One. One, or unity is correct, yes. <laughs> Here are your bonuses, St. John's, there on words. What term was particularly used by the British Raj in colonial India for lunch or any light meal? Tiffin. 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 Yeah. Tiffin. Correct. Which two-word phrase again adopted by the British during the Raj comes from the Hindi, meaning a small measure and could be applied to a glass of spirits, especially whiskey? Um, it's, it's not that easy with punch. Huh? Come on. Two-word. I would say two-word. Um, no. I need an answer. Noseful. No, no, we dram. Uh, a wee dram. Now that's from Scotland. It's a chota peg. Which word has been used colloquially in Britain to mean a cup of tea and enter the language from the Chinese? Char. 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 Yes, I think that could be right. Yeah. 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 Okay. Char. Char is right. So with the scores on 105 and 70, about halfway through the contest, we're going to take a music round. For your music starter, you'll hear an extract from a Mozart opera. Ten points if you can name the opera. Here it is. Imperial Campbell. It's from Cosi Fantuti. It is from Cosi Fantuti. Well done. <laughs> so, following on from that, uh, three more Mozart operas, and in each case, I want the name of the character singing. Here's the first. <laughs> Don Giovanni. It is Don Giovanni, yes. Here's the second. Papageno. Papageno in the magic flute, yes, and finally, who's this? Figaro. Figaro is correct. Well done. 
Another starter question. Which adjective derives from the Greek for common and refers to a characteristic that is shared by both sexes? Ah. Imperial Campbell. Epicene. Epicene is correct, yes. <laughs> Your bonuses, you'd be pleased to hear, Imperial, are on physics. Which two physicists, one Scottish, the other Austrian, give their names to the law which describes the statistical distribution of the energies of the molecules of a classical gas? Come on. No. You really ought to know this, shouldn't you? <laughs> it's Maxwell and Boltzmann. Five points if you can tell me this. According to Maxwell Boltzmann statistics, what in terms of the Boltzmann constant K and the absolute temperature T is the average energy of a gas molecule per degree of freedom? E to the minus KT. No, it's one half K times T. How many degrees of freedom does a diatomic gas molecule have that possesses translational and rotational energy? Six. Six. No, five. Another starter question. First seen in 1969 and described by a NASA scientist as, quote, an attempt to bring a note of realism into the space race, which fictional family included Major, Mother, Small, Tiny and Granny, inhabited a small... St. John's Bell. The Jetsons. No, you lose five points. Inhabited a small blue planet and were created by Oliver Postgate and Peter Fermin. Ah, Imperial Hodgson. The Clangers. The Clangers is right. <laughs> And you retake the lead on another note of triviality and you get three bonuses linked by a surname. John Bickerstaff is remembered for his commission of a replica of the Eiffel Tower built between 1891 and 94 in which town of which he became mayor? Blackpool. Blackpool. Correct. Rodney Bickerstaff became general secretary of which trade union on its formation in 1993? Transport and General Workers Union. No, it's Unison. By what name is the stage performer born Elaine Bickerstaff in Barnet in 1951, better known? Elaine Page. Yeah. Elaine Page. Elaine Page is right. Another starter question. What general term is used for fish which start life with one eye on either side of their head, but then ah. adapt... Imperial Campbell. The flatfish. Flatfish is right. The eyes move, or one of the eyes move. <laughs> <laughs> Your bonuses are on trees, Imperial. The fleshy scarlet seed covering, called the aril, is the only non-poisonous part of which tree? It's toxin being several alkaloids collectively called taxine. You. You is correct. Silver wattle or mimosa is a species of which genus of tree native to the tropics and subtropics and used in Australia by early settlers for building wattle work huts? In Africa and tropical America, certain species are called thorn trees. Euphorbia? No, it's Acacia. Which species of pine has the Latin name Pinus longeva, grows in the Rocky Mountains at high altitudes and has a distinctive gnarled appearance? Some specimens are believed to be the oldest living things on Earth at nearly 5,000 years. Bristlecone pine. The bristlecone pine is correct. Another starter question. The Austrian province of Kärnten is more familiarly known... Ah, Imperial Campbell. Carinthia. As Carinthia, yes. <laughs> Imperial, you get three bonuses on great cruise liners. Which ship was built on the Harland and Wolf Yard, launched on March the 16th, 1960, by Dame Patty Menzies, and served during the Falklands conflict? The Canberra. Canberra. The Canberra. Correct. Built on the Clyde by John Brown & Co. in 1940, which liner was in later years renamed the Seawise University, with the intention that it should tour the world as a seagoing teaching institution. It was gutted, though, by fire in Hong Kong Harbour in 1972. The Queen Mary. No, it was the Queen Elizabeth. Which liner entered service in 1953 and was lost in 1956 off Nantucket with the loss of many lives after colliding with the Stockholm? I don't know. No idea. It's the Andrea Doria. Fingers on the buzzers, ten points for this. Which two names have been variously identified as enemies of God's people or nations under Satan's rule, according to the Bible, in medieval legend as opponents of Alexander the Great and as the last survivors of a race of giants inhabiting Britain in the pre-Roman era? Ah, Imperial escort. Gog and Magog? Gog and Magog is right. <laughs> Imperial, your bonuses are on, on inventors' earlier efforts. Hippolyte Meige Murier was awarded the Légion d'honneur by Napoleon III for his work on gaining 14% more white bread from a given amount of wheat, but he's best remembered for the invention of which substance developed in the 1860s? Come on. 
Perspex? No, it's margarine. Which American inventor proposed to his second wife, Mina Miller, in Morse code while in the company of others on a train, some of his earliest work being an arrangement of two Morse registers to transmit two messages simultaneously on one wire? Edison. That was Thomas Edison, yes. <coughs> Alexander Bain, who was granted the first British patent for the electric clock, also designed a chemical telegraph that could be used for the transmission of text and of images. What common term is used today for this process? A fax. Facsimile or fax machine is right. Another starter question. Which area of the North Atlantic Ocean encompasses the Bermuda Islands and takes its name from the genus of three... Ah, Imperial Est Corps. The Sargasso Sea. Sargasso Sea takes its name from the sea. <laughs> there. OK, here are your bonuses. In which play by Anton Chekhov do Professor Seberyakov and his second wife, Yelena, arrive at the country estate he inherited from his first wife, whose relations still live there? The cherry orchard. No, it's Uncle Vanya. In Shakespeare's Richard II, which uncle of the king dies shortly after making his speech describing England as this royal throne of kings, this sceptered isle? John of Gaunt. John of Gaunt? John of Gaunt is right. And finally, for five points, Uncle Pumblechook appears in which novel by Charles Dickens, although the novel's narrator, quote, was not allowed to call him uncle under the severest penalties? Uh, I need an answer. Um, David. David Copperfield. No, it's Great Expectations. And with the scores on 100, 595, another picture around, you're going to see a piece of sculpture. All you have to do for 10 points, very simple, identify the artist. Here it is. St. John's Linham. Epstein. Anyone want a bus from Imperial? Ah. Imperial Estcourt. Moore? It is Henry Moore, yes. It's large standing figure, <laughs> knife edge. So you then get the picture bonuses, Imperial. Three more 20th century artists for you to identify from their works. Each correct answer worth five points. Here's the first. Andy Goldsworthy. It is indeed, yes, Elm Leaves. Secondly, who's this? Elizabeth Frink. It is, two heads by Elizabeth Frink. And finally, this. Gormley. It is Anthony Gormley, that's the Angel of the North. Four and a half minutes to go, another start of questions, a possible ten points. Which British colony was called Calpe by the Phoenicians and was the entry point for the Muslim... Ah, Imperial Escort. Gibraltar. Gibraltar is correct, yes. <laughs> Here are your bonuses then, Imperial. Uh, Monsieur de Paris, William Boylman and Topman were all give names given in previous centuries to members of which profession? Come on. Uh, no, Sorry, no idea. They're all ex executioners. Who executed Titus Oates, amongst others, his name surviving in, in name as the hangman in Punch and Judy shows, which were introduced into Britain in the early 1700s? Derek, his name was... Someone... Come on. Don't know. Don't know. It's Jack Ketch. The executioner Gregory Brandon numbered Walter Raleigh among his victims and started out as apprentice to which other executioner whose name is given to a type of crane? Derek. Correct. Less than four minutes to go. Another starter question. What term is used for a number which indicates the position of a member in an ordered sequence or in a... St. John's Lair. An ordinal. Ordinal numbers are right. <laughs> Your bonus is St. John's are on society women. Who was the inspiration for Lady Teasel in Sheridan School for Scandal, was known as a gambler, fashion icon and, and society beauty and was described by the Prince of Wales on her death in 1806 as the best-natured and best-bred woman in England? Go, 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 go. Georgiana. Georgiana, Duchess of Devonshire is correct. Who is the eldest daughter of Georgiana's sister and the subject of several scandals, including her authorship of Glenarvan, and a thinly veiled account of her affair with Lord Byron? No idea. No idea. No, okay. we, we don't know. Lady Carlton. Caroline Lamb. Oh. Caroline Lamb was married for some time to William Lamb, who became Prime Minister in 1834, steering the young Queen Victoria through her early years on the throne, and known from 1829 by which title? Viscount Melbourne. Viscount Melbourne. That's right, he became Lord Melbourne. Right, another starter question. Ten points for this. The Stannery Towns of South West England were so called because of their association... St. John's Linham. Tin mines. With tin, it's correct, yes. <laughs> Here are your bonuses. In the electromagnetic spectrum, what name is given to waves whose frequencies range from about 3 kilohertz to 300 gigahertz? Microwaves. No, they're radio waves. Who in 1888 became the first person to produce and detect radio waves? Hertz. Hertz is correct. What now old-fashioned word for a domestic radio receiver reflected the fact there was no tangible wireless. connection between... Wireless is correct. Another starter question. Which insect has the Latin name Forficula auricoralia? 
Imperial Campbell. The earwig. The earwig is correct. You get three bonuses on a surname, Imperial. Which film actor was born in Hobart, Tasmania in 1909, studied in England and Australia, and worked in New Guinea before moving, moving to the USA in 1935? His film credits including Captain Blood, The Seahawk, and Gentleman Jim. Basil Rathbone. No, it's Errol Flynn. John Flynn, an Australian Presbyterian minister, founded which medical organization in Queensland in 1928? The Flying Doctors. Correct. The radical American politician Elizabeth Gurley Flynn was chair of which organization from 1961, a position she held until her death in 1964? National Organization. Come on. National Organization of Women? No, it was the Communist Party of the United States. A minute and a half to go, and here's another starter. Which word derives from the name of the Sumerian magus in the Acts of the Apostles who offered money to receive... St. John's Finglass. Simony. Simony is correct. Your bonuses, St. John's, are on courts. Which court is the legal organisation dealing with the financial affairs of those who are mentally unable to manage them? Court of Wards. Court of Wards. No, it's the Court of Protection. Mark Twain's novel of 1889 placed a Connecticut Yankee in the court of which king? King Arthur. Correct. The Court of the Lions and the Court of the Myrtles are the most famous of the Muslim courts of which Spanish palace? Alhambra. Come on. Say it. Alhambra. Alhambra. The Alhambra in Granada is correct. A minute to go. Here's another starter question. Which term means the sum of the chemical reactions which occur within a living organism and comes from the Greek word... St. John's Bell. Metabolism. Metabolism is right. Your bonuses are on the Czech author, Carol Chapek. Which word was invented by Carol Chapek in his play of 1921 entitled R-U-R, the word deriving from the Czech word for forced labour? Robot. Robots. Correct. Which play, first performed in 1921 and one of several works foreshadowing totalitarianism, did Chapek write with his brother Joseph? No idea. No idea. You don't know. It was the insect play. Which Czech composer born in Moravia based his 1926 opera, The Macropolis Case, on a play of the same name by Chapek? Janicek. No. Janicek. Janicek is right. Another starter question. Which word comes from the Latin for compassionate and means a ledge on the underside of a hinged seat in a choir stall? Giving Misericord. Misericord is correct. Here are your bonuses. They're on culinary herbs. What is the common name of the aromatic perennial herb Artemisia drucununculus, which is often used to flavour wine vinegar and in French cuisine serves as an essential ingredient of sauce bernaise? Rosemary. And at the gong, St. John's have 195, Imperial have 250. The answer to that was Carrigan, but bad luck, you weren't quite big enough. Well, St. John's. Bad luck. You started off well. You just couldn't get in quickly enough in the latter half of the contest. And Imperial, many congratulations to you. You are now the University Challenge Series champions. And now to present the trophy, it's my pleasure to introduce a man who holds a unique office. It dates back to 1616 when James I granted it to the playwright and poet Ben Jonson. Since then, it's been held by many of our greatest and most popular writers, including John Dryden, William Wordsworth, Alfred Lord Tennyson, Sir John Betjeman, and Ted Hughes. Please welcome the Poet Laureate, Andrew Motion. Welcome. Thank you very much. Very nice well, to be here. Now, what did you think? Well, very impressive. Um, particularly impressive because, as so often happens on the programme, there is a wonderful range of things being talked about. Here we have four scientists who are able to say a lot about art. Very good. Great. Well, look, can I ask you now to present the trophy to the winning Imperial College team? Very and Imperial, good. would you like to come on and receive the trophy from the Poet Laureate? Congratulations. Well done. Congratulations. 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 Well done. Well done. Let's move out here and Okay. Well, I'm not sure what you do with it. Very heavy. Well done. Well done. Now, many congratulations then to Imperial College London. Well done to all the teams who took part in this series, especially our gallant runners-up, St. John's College, uh, Oxford. <laughs> Uh, many thanks also to Andrew Motion for presenting the trophy. We'll be back with the next series later in the year, but until then, it's good night. Good night. <laughs>